Hi, this is Dr. John Bergdorf. In this video, we're going to look at a matrix method for solving systems of equations. This method is known as the Gauss-Jordan method. And although in future courses, you'll spend some time exploring how to do this work by hand, for the purposes of this course, we are mainly going to show you how your calculator can perform these operations for you to give you a quick way, especially to solve systems of equations that have quite a few variables and quite a few uh, equations. So I'm going to share my screen so you can see some interesting things. And hopefully at this point you can see my screen and uh, on the left you'll see some notes and on the right you're going to see a graphing calculator. Um, in, we're going to talk about how to take a system of equations, convert it into something that a graphing calculator can understand, and let the calculator do the work for us. And that's going to be perfectly fine for this section. Now, the calculator I have pulled up is a TI-84 plus CE. Uh, all TI-83 and 84 calculators work exactly the same way. Uh, the keystrokes are the same, the buttons are the same, everything is the same. Uh, if you happen to have a different brand of calculator, I'm afraid you'll have to do a little bit of research uh, to see if it has the capability of handling this. Uh, but we, but most of you probably have a TI-83 or 84, and it certainly can. So let's get started. Over on the left, you're going to see an example of a system of equations. I'm circling it with my mouse. I hope you can see that. Um, we could solve this by the elimination method or the substitution method, no problem. But to solve it using a calculator, using what are called matrix methods, what we do is we create what's called a matrix. In fact, it's called an augmented matrix. The augmented refers to this vertical line right here. And if you look very carefully, what the matrix consists of is the coefficients only in the two equations. The X's and the Y's are left out. The vertical line represents an equal sign, although you won't see that on the calculator. Um, and uh, notice that the in this case we have 1x plus 2y, so the top row, it, the coefficients would be 1 and 2, with the constant being 6, and below that 3, negative 1, and 11. Now, what we are going to do is have the calculator convert this matrix into what's called row reduced or reduced row echelon form. Um, it, there are legal calculations that can be made that will create an equivalent system, one that has the exact same solutions, but for which it is very easy to look at the results. Before we do that, though, we need to talk about how we get this into the calculator. So I'm going to show you actually all the keystrokes. On your calculator, look to see if you can find the word matrix in the left-hand column. It's a second uh, function operation. We're going to do all of our work there. So you click second and you click the button that the word matrix is written on and you'll see some names of some matrices. We are going to edit a matrix. So looking at this sort of round wheel shape thing, use the right arrow to go over to edit and I'm going to hit enter to select matrix A. Now, what's written across the top here refers to the size of the matrix. The first number is how many rows it has, and the second number is how many columns it has. The matrix that we would need would have two rows and three columns. So I'm going to change this to where there are only two rows. And by hitting enter, it'll uh, toggle over to the number of columns, hit three columns, two columns, and then hit enter again. And you'll see that there are some numbers left in here from some previous work I did, but we're going to change that. Just enter the numbers one at a time and hit enter, and you'll see that the matrix moves from position to position. We're going to create, I already have a two, that's good, so I just hit enter twice. 
We're going to create the matrix that you see over on the handout. And you can see it goes down to the second row, which is great. And this one en entry is negative one. And this entry is 11. That saves the matrix that I want. Now I will use it for other purposes. What I do now is I hit the second function again and quit to get out of the editor. And now we're going to show you where to find the operation that will row reduce this matrix. So we're going to be still in the matrix area. Click second and then matrix. But this time, just scroll over to the column that says math. And there are many, many options here. And actually, the number of the options varies depending on the exact model of TI calculator you have. We want to look for reduced row echelon form. So I'm going to just scroll down through this list. And somewhere in that list, which keeps going, there's many things that you don't need to worry about what, that is, what those are. Look for the row that says RREF reduced row echelon form. Don't use REF, that's row echelon form, but it's not reduced row echelon form. It's not as useful to us. So you roll down until you scroll down until you see RREF and then you hit enter and you'll see that it creates RREF for reduced row echelon form. Go back to your second matrix option again, second matrix, and this time, all we want to do is select matrix A, which we have pre-designed. So hit enter directly and close the parentheses. And what the calculator will do internally is a set of operations that transform the matrix into an equivalent form. Let's hit enter. And you will see the matrix here that I have also copied into the into the document on the left. Now, what we want to do is essentially translate that back to a system of equations. Now, bear in mind that the first entry in any row is the coefficient of x, and the second entry is the coefficient of y. So if I look at the top row only, it says 1 times x plus 0 times y equal 4, or more simply, x equal 4, which I'm highlighting right here. The top row says x equal 4. The bottom row says 0x plus 1y equals 1, or more definitely, and I'm highlighting this, y equal 1. Well, guess what? That's your solution. That's telling you that x is 4 and y is 1, and you can write it as an ordered pair uh, in a solution set if you like. The calculator just did all that work for you. Isn't that awesome? So all the work that you've been doing um, with the substitution and elimination method, they're incredibly important to know how to do that. But the calculator is doing this for you. Now, a system of equations with just two equations and two variables is not really very hard to do by hand. Where the matrix method and the calculator get especially nice is when you're looking at systems of three equations, three variables, or maybe more, four variables, five variables, six variables, who knows what. So I wanted to not uh, expose the what, what the answer is going to be. We'll deal with that in a minute. Um, here's a system of equations. And what I will need to do is I'll need to build a matrix that has these coefficients. To be exact, the matrix is going to need to look like that, what I just highlighted. Um, notice that the top row is the coefficients for x, y, and z in the first equation. The second row is the second equation. The third row is the third equation. So in our calculator, I'm just going to clear this out. We have to create a matrix of this size. So you go to second matrix and scroll over to edit using my arrows. Now, actually, we can go ahead and just change matrix A. That's good enough. So I'm going to click uh, enter to change the matrix. I just need to figure out what the correct size is. The first number again is the number of rows. In this case, we have one, one, two, three rows. So three rows. So I'm going to change the two to a three. 
and the number of columns, actually I should be looking down here more likely, one, two, three, four columns. So we scroll over and change that to four. Notice that the space in the matrix is incre increasing so you can have enough room and start entering the numbers position by position. So we have a one already, that's convenient. We actually already have a two, that's convenient. So just hit enter and enter to get through that. Then you have to start changing things. So negative one is the next entry and hit enter. And then six, and then hit enter again. You automatically pop down to the second row. Two, enter, negative three, enter, one, enter, and negative one, enter. And finally, the third row, three, enter, negative four, enter, two, enter, three, enter. And there we go. Now, that creates the matrix, and just check it over to make sure it matches what's on the handout to the left. It looks pretty good. You do second quit to get out of the matrix edit mode, second matrix to get back to your matrix options. This time you scroll over to math and down to RREF, reduce row echelon form, click enter. Then second matrix one more time, this time just to select matrix A, close the parentheses, and the calculator will do all the necessary internal work to create a, a matrix that represents an equivalent system. But in a very cool pattern where you see ones down the main diagonal and zeros everywhere else. is coefficient uh, represents coefficients of x the second column coefficients of once you can get it to this form simply says x equal 3 y equal 4 z equal 5 and that's your solution nice and easy i hope that makes sense i want to do one more with a special case i want you to see what happens when we get uh one of those dependent cases that we've talked about already. So when you look at this, you'll see it looks pretty innocent. We're going to do basically the same thing. Let's clear this out. Hit second matrix to edit a matrix to have the desired uh, entries that we want. So go over to edit and hit enter. Notice that from the previous example, this is already set up to have three rows and four columns. So that's great. We can just uh, toggle through by hitting enter until we get to the first entry and then start entering the numbers. Three, enter. Two, that's already there. One, enter. Nine, enter. Second row, two, enter. Negative three, oh, that's all right, the same already. Enter, one, enter. So we just page through if it happens to be already correct. 11, looks like I like to use the same numbers a lot. But in the bottom row, everything's different. So we have five, enter, negative one, enter, two, enter, that's still the same. And finally, 20. Now the matrix on the calculator matches what you see on the handout. You can look at that very carefully and see that that's so. Hit second, quit to get out of the editing mode. And then second matrix again. Scroll over to math to find the option that will do reduced row echelon form. Select that. Go back to the matrix uh, option again, but this time you just select the matrix. We've already edit, edited it. Close the parentheses and hit enter. And you go, oh my goodness, that just looks so much worse than the others. Uh, where's my pretty little pattern? Well, for one thing, all those decimals in there are going to make that hard to look at. 
we can convert those decimals into fractions doing the following operation. This time, just click the button that says math. It's right here. Just click math. And the very first option that you will see highlighted will say FRAC. What that does is it simply takes all decimals and converts them to, a, to fractions in reduced form. Let's hit enter and see what happens. We, you'll see that it, you get the commandment. And this is basically saying, take your answer, convert it to fraction form, click enter one more time, and oh, look how much better that looks. Now, still not quite what I had in mind. I don't see that nice pattern of one, one, zero, and zeros everywhere else. This is going to be a sign to us that we have dependent form. Here's the same matrix uh, recopy. Now, I want to call your attention to the bottom row of the matrix in particular. The bottom row of the matrix, if you translate that, basically says 0x plus 0y plus 0c equals 0, or 0 equals 0. Now, that's a true statement. When a variable goes away, much like we saw in the previous section, and you end up with a true statement, that means that there are infinitely many solutions. So there will be infinitely many solutions here. Let's take the matrix and write what it would mean. So with your first coefficient being for x, you would have 1x plus 0y plus 5 thirteenths z equals 49 thirteenths, not the prettiest numbers in the world. The second row would say 0x plus 1y minus 1 third z equals negative 15 thirteenths, and the bottom row says 0 equals 0. That's not going to be helpful to us. We're not going to pay any further attention to that. Now, to make use of this answer, it's best if you solve the equations for x. And this will remind you of what we did with dependent systems in the previous section. Uh, solving for x, we subtract 5 thirteenths from both sides on the first equation and add 1 thirteenths of z to the other side on both sides in the second equation. And these uh, equations here give me x and y in terms of z. So very much like the de dependent systems we saw in the previous video, if you write your ordered triple in this case like this, the z at the end represents that you can pick anything you want to for z. Uh, and for x and y, you simply write in the little equations or the little expressions that you see that define them. This one's x, and this, the first one's x, and the second one is y. That's how you represent a dependent system. Now, I don't have an example for this, but I just want to quickly mention, how do you know if you have an inconsistent system? Inconsistent means there's no solution. Well, suppose you do your RREF command and you get the following. Look at the bottom row. The bottom row is saying 0x plus 0y plus 0z equals 5, or in other words, 0 equals 5. Now, that's false. If you get, if, if all of your variable terms go away and you get a false statement, that indicates you have no solution. That's an inconsistent system, or stating it differently, the uh, solution set is simply the empty set that we also talked about. So try some of the problems in this section using your calculator rather than by hand and see if you can get the hang of this system. Very, very handy, especially if you need a quick answer and you don't really want to take the time to do the work. I hope that helps. Good luck.